All right, so this morning in our philosophy lesson, we're going to just talk a bit about what philosophy is before we get started. And then we're going to get into looking at some questions um, for philosophy on the question quadrant, which we'll build, making some philosophical questions, sequencing them to make a discussion plan, and then starting the discussion and having some reflection. So that's what we're hoping to get through today. So first we're just going to have a little bit of a discussion about what philosophy is. When you're passing the ball, we need to be careful, don't we? So the first thing I would want you to talk about is what do you, what do you, uh, when we say we do philosophy, what do we actually mean by that? What do we mean when we say we do philosophy? Um, when we do philosophy, we say we come together in a community mm -hmm. and discuss issues, topics and sometimes themes of books and mm -hmm. politics and a range of different things. Okay. Anybody else want to add to that? What do we say when we, what do we mean when we say we do philosophy? Uh, when we do philosophy, it's like we come together then look for the, uh, we have a topic, then you start to like describe that topic and find out more about it to build something and find one decision that can help. Um, well, philosophy is when, it's when we come together as a community and like we're given maybe a theme or a topic or all those things I'd hate to say and we work towards finding an answer and yeah, sometimes we don't find an answer and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we don't find an answer. And when we do, often not everyone agrees on it. That's it. Yeah. And that's okay. We also agree and disagree on things um, which help us see um, people's perspective things and um, for example if I agree with something and if I see Hector disagreeing with it then um, then I can understand how Hector um, sees the situation and thinks about the topic and like I can get new ideas. Mm -hmm. And if the people are frowning Beta, it's all right isn't it? Just yeah. means they're thinking. What have, we, what have you learnt doing, through doing philosophy that's helped you in other areas of your learning in school? Well, in maths we learnt, like, for questions you learn to problem solve, as Harry said earlier. Mm -hmm. It can also help you just physically build your brain and mentally build your brain to make it stronger and all the neural pathways like bridges in your brain like a comprehension test mm -hmm. um, and you have to think of the answer well it can help you think outside of the box mm -hmm. and sort of challenge what you would think it would be challenge your first answer to think yeah. a second time think a bit deeper yeah mm, philosophy can help a lot in life like when um you think you have only one option and then you think about like philosophy, like there's all these other way. Like in philosophy, like you argue your one <coughs> point, but then um, with other people saying like you can learn, and then in life later, like you know you have other choices. It helps you to see different choices. Yeah. Um, building, building on what Peter previously said, just said what Mia said and what Finn said. I'd like to kind of tie it together and say what. Um, it helps us see different perspectives. Mm -hmm. It can help us see different ways in maths. So we can look at it differently and it helps us in life. But I think it also can help us um, understand world events and history, okay? It's not easy for us to understand how slaves felt in the 16th century, but using our philosophical brains and minds, we can actually look back and, and try and get kind of a glimpse through their perspective and kind of, you know, kind of start to feel how they felt back then. So we can kind of build on that and enrich our lives. And so we're not just focusing on ourselves, but we know how everyone else feels. Mm, try to think about it. Do you know what that's called? Perspectives. Yeah, taking different perspectives and that feeling how other people felt. Empathy. It's building empathy, yeah. I, I think that philosophy isn't always about logically thinking, it's more about thinking about what it means to like 
be human or something. It's not like what being human is, it's like what it means to be human. Mm. So again, like it's looking at um, a question from a different <coughs> perspective and to get a new answer. Mm. Yeah, so it's not just about, like remember yesterday afternoon and Jocelyn was talking about the maze and the tree? Yeah, you built on it later on. He started off with the maze and the tree and then you built on that metaphor. So it's about thinking creatively and thinking laterally as well. Not just logically, not just in a linear way. Building on Willow's idea, it, it's, um, it can do the thing where you have all these questions and you've got so many answers for it and it can be it can be like a triangle so you have all these questions down the bottom and then you narrow that down to only the ones that make sense and that help you and then you take the answers off them and pull them together to make one big answer that can answer your question mm. okay before we go on can you think about a way that it helps all of us think together in a group well, it can make us see sense, as in some people have already said that, like, say someone's got an idea, you can, if through philosophy, you can understand it better. Mm. You can, like, know how, like, know more of what they're saying. Than Why is that, Finn? What does philosophy do for you, or what does it help you learn to do? It doesn't just help you with your thinking, it helps you to read other people's thinking and how to almost like understand exactly what they're saying. Can like, someone expand on what yeah. Finn's saying and think about how does that actually happen? What do we do in philosophy that helps you to think more deeply about what other people are saying? Yeah. Um, well, we build on each other's ideas. Yeah. So, yeah. If we do that, then we can all come to like a conclusion, mm -hmm. which then well, it's helps you think more deeply. Okay. Well, what about somebody who hasn't had a say? Is there something we do in philosophy that helps us build on each other's ideas? Um, I think agreeing and disagreeing, because if you understand what someone is saying, to disagree, it shows that you know what they're saying and you're challenging what they're saying so that it gets a deeper conversation and then you might disagree, someone might agree with you, but then someone else might disagree with you. And if it bounces back on agreeing and disagreeing, I think it makes a deeper um, uh, conversation. Or, mm. And then that could maybe help you find an answer mm. or something close to an answer. Okay. It helps everyone to be less stubborn. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> How do you know that, Caitlin? Um, because you're open to other perspectives and you can see what they're thinking as yeah. well as you. Yeah. So you're not as stubborn in your thinking. If you're not as stubborn in your thinking, what are you? What sort of thinking are you doing? Growth mindset. It's like a growth mindset, yeah. Philosophy is not just a discussion with people just sitting like this then we start discussing. Philosophy is like your brain. Mm. You can stand there and thinking. Even young children prep, they think first. If I do this, how is teacher going to fail? So that is philosophy. Mm. Is how you discuss in yourself and think. Mm, what is good thing or good way? And so philosophy is not just discussion, is your brain how you think and how you open your mind to think. Is there anything about the whole school it's helped with? Can anyone talk about that? Maybe the, somebody who's been to a different school and has a comparison. Well in other schools they don't like when we talk about philosophy we understand lots of the, um, most of the schools don't have this and in other schools they just don't understand. Like in here we talk about other cultures, other religions and in other schools they don't understand that so, so they think just because they came from another country that um, I'm bad and I, I, I do bad things with me. But in this school, because we do philosophy, everyone understands more. And can, uh, like, you can talk to people and they can understand. It's like easier to communicate with people. The rules of philosophy. What do we got, Morgan? Yay. Pass it over to Morgan. What do you know, Morgan, about the rules? There may be no single right answer. There may be no single right answer. Why do you pick that one, Morgan? What do you know about that rule? Why do we have that one? Because um, like people didn't 
Yeah. Which makes it a deeper conversation, yes. which is why it was next to your That's great. So people having no single right answer lets us have a more open mind and be more flexible. Another rule, Xavier? We listen to each other. We are going to listen to each other. And how is that helpful? That's helpful because you can like listen to them and think of an idea yes. instead of their perspective of what they are thinking. Yes, that's how we get the building on, isn't it? We have to think about their idea itself. We listen first, okay? And Beatrice? We build on each other's ideas. We build on each other's ideas. How's that real helpful? Um, well, if we don't build on each other's ideas, then the philosophy lesson wouldn't like, grow and we wouldn't be able to do it. We don't get deeper into ideas. It doesn't grow. Yeah, the ideas don't grow. Okay. What's the one that follows listen? Um, respect. Yeah, we respect, respect each other. Can you tell me what you mean by that? So, as respect, so, like what Xavier said, Xavier said, yeah, um, to listen, you need to look at them, but that would also be going on to be this frowning thing, like yes. a couple of weeks ago, you don't have to look at someone to be listening, see, I could be looking at, Heck, I mean, Jocelyn, while Hector's talking, but I could be listening to him. But we are going to try and look at the speaker, aren't we? Yeah, we yeah but not stare at them. Yeah, yeah. So, going to give them our attention. Like Justin talked about listening the other week, about giving people not just your eyes, but your ears and your whole self when you're listening to them. Yeah. Be reasonable. We're going to be reasonable. We're going to be reason-able. And to be reasonable, what word are we going to use? Because. Because. Yay, thank you. Be reasonable, which means we're going to be able to give our reasons. We're going to use the word because. We're going to try and be appropriate. Really hard. <laughs> and Ella, Ella hasn't heard us say yet. Relevant. And we're going to be relevant, and that's got something to do with what Hector was saying about making connections. Um, you don't go off the track and you stay with what everyone's talking about. So you can try and stick to the point, not digress. Who was in Annika's class last year? You know, she always digressed, took us off the track, and, and sometimes we found out it was, all, it was okay actually. The other few things I want you to think about while we're doing this, these next few activities is some of the skills that we um, use in doing philosophy. I want you to think about asking each other questions, giving examples, giving counterexamples, forming analogies or metaphors, uncovering assumptions and making distinctions. And I want you, when you think about doing those things, not just to do them, and we, we already have done a little bit of some of those things, um, like Finn was starting to form analogies about caves and French doors and that sort of thing. So actually name the skill that you're using. I want to ask a question about, I'd like to give an example, I'd like to give a counter example. So if you can name the skill that you're using as well, that would be really, really good.